Hello, welcome to my stateroom. I am currently on a cruise and I thought I would share with you some tips and tricks for taking a cruise with a ventilator. And these also will apply to just any trip in general when traveling with a ventilator. First of all, you're going to want to make sure you take a ventilator stand with you. If you do not have this, this is a cart that has wheels on it and you can put your heated humidifier and your ventilator all on one. Many times when traveling, especially in hotel rooms and on cruises, there are not a lot of room next to the bed in our room. We have this tiny little nightstand. It has the telephone on and it is not big enough to put my ventilator and heated humidifier on it. Furthermore, when you are on a cruise, which our boat is rocking right now, and that's perfect timing because your boat may rock. And if your boat is rocking and you have a heated humidifier and your ventilator on a nightstand, it might flip off during the night if you hit a wave or if you just in general start rocking and rolling on the high seas. So it is best to have a ventilator cart also on the ventilator cart, you can lock the wheels. So that is also an advantage. You can lock the wheels and it will not roll away. Some uh, staterooms are not that large, so you can just wedge the ventilator cart between the bed and the, the wall and it will stay put without even needing to lock the wheels. So that is first, get a ventilator cart. If you're trying to think, well, how am I going to get the ventilator cart onto an airplane? easy let me tell you so when you go to the airport you are going to put everything you want um, in your check luggage and anything you want to carry on such as your ventilator you're going to take with you for the ventilator cart you can either check and you can put it into your check luggage and there should not be a charge i repeat there should not be a charge but please check with your airline carrier for the ventilator cart it should go free because it's medical equipment if you do not want to do that, and I personally almost never check it at the baggage area, I take it with me through the airport and I continue to keep my, my ventilator on top of the cart and I can just push it through the airport. Makes traveling with the ventilator so much easier. And once I get to the gate, I let the gate agent know that I'm going to be gate checking the ventilator cart. Gate checking means they're going to put a little uh, tag on it to notify the people that you're going to need that uh, piece of equipment at your destination. So you're going to take it with you down the jet bridge. At the end of the jet bridge, you're going to leave it there. A man is going to take it, put it on the airplane in the baggage compartment. When you arrive at your next stop, they will take it from the baggage compartment and bring it up for you. And then you can continue to take it with you. And if you have a connecting flight, you take it with you to the next flight. Or if you're finished, you just take it with you and you are good to go. There is also another option that once you get to the gate originally and you say you want to gate check it, they can give you an option that you can uh, check it all the way through to your destination. And so they're going to put a special tag on it and you'll just pick it up at baggage, baggage claim. So you have two, three ways. You can either check it when you originally check in all your luggage and it will check all the way through and you pick it up at baggage claim. Number two, you will gate check it and you will pick it up every time your plane stops and you get off, you're going to pick up your cart, take it with you. And then if you have any connections, you're going to continue to gate check it all the way through. Or the third way is you're just going to take it to the gate agent and say you want to check it, but you want to check it all the way to your destination and it will go all the way to your destination and you will pick it up in baggage claim. So that is how you get a ventilator cart through the airport. So you made it through the airport. Hooray! Now it is time for you to go on a cruise ship one thing you're going to want to do before you even step foot on an airplane and while you're still planning your cruise, please contact the cruise line and ask if they have any special documentation they need from you. For Celebrity, that's where I'm, I'm cruising on, they have a special needs form which is available online. You put in all your information such as your departure date, your stateroom, all the basic information and you let them know any medical equipment you are taking with you. You can also request special dietary needs if you have any allergies or if you need special, um, special like formula, not feeding tube formula, but if you need Insure or something that's liquid, you let them know in that space. For celebrity, when you are letting them know, there is a spot and it's they they say are you bringing CPAP with you and if you bring in CPAP with you they will provide an extension cord and distilled water whenever i travel with celebrity i just 
skip saying I have a ventilator. I just say I have CPAP because they provide distilled water. Ha! Ah. And Celebrity provides distilled water for the entire length of the cruise for free. But please, please check with your cruise line. Not all cruise lines provide free distilled water. Many cruise lines will provide distilled water, but sometimes there is a charge for this. If the charge is too much and you don't want to deal with that, you are allowed to bring distilled water onto the cruise line. Just make sure if you are bringing water on, this bottle would not be allowed because it is open. Make sure the bottles are completely full and sealed. Everything on the cruise line needs to be sealed and shut. You can't bring any open containers of food or any beverage. They must be completely full, sealed, shut, and, um, and safe like that. If they're open, they will not allow you to bring them onto the ship. So that is about distilled water. Next up, we have keeping hydrated. I cannot tell you when traveling, it is so easy to get dehydrated. You don't even realize that you're out all day having a lot of fun, seeing the sights and everything, and you get back and you are very, very thirsty. So for this reason, please bring with you water. Either bring with you your own water from home, get a drink package on the cruise line, or you can bring your own uh, bottles and you can fill them up with water and you can bring them to shore with you. Oh, please, wherever you go, have water. Which brings me to another point. The water on cruise ships is highly chlorinated. I cannot tell you, it has so much chlorine when I shower, I feel like I am showering in a swimming pool. <laughs> I just cannot tolerate all that chlorine. My skin gets very, very brittle, very, very dehydrated. If I drink the water on the ship, my lips will start to break out. Like, I don't know if you can see, I've drank some ship water and my lips are all raw and, and dehydrated. And whenever I drink ship water, I just get very, very dehydrated, very sick, and I cannot tolerate it. For this reason, we drink bottled water when we're on the ship. Either you can bring along as much bottled water as you can for most cruise lines, please check because some of them are now limiting to one case of water per stateroom. So please check with the limits for the bottled water. Celebrity, as far as I know, there is not a limit. You can bring bottled water with you on the cruise line or get a drink package when you're on the cruise line. Or if you're in port almost every single day, you can buy water in the cruise port and bring it with you on board. A lot of times the water in the cruise port is cheaper than what it is on the cruise ship but it depends on your port. If you have a really expensive port, it might be really, really expensive. But if you have a really cheap port, it might be really, really cheap. So again, try to sort all this out ahead of time. If you don't know, just buy a drink package and you don't have to worry about that. So that is water. Talking about hydration, you are gonna to wanna to make sure your lungs stay hydrated. So please try to stay connected to your heat humidifier as much as possible. I know this is not very feasible, especially when you're on a cruise, you're constantly out of your stateroom, you're going down to eat at the dining room, maybe you're going to the buffet, or you're going to, to shore every day. And so you don't have time to connect up to your heat humidifier and your lungs will get very, very dry. But for this reason, please use HMEs. These are heat and moisture exchangers. Whenever you're not connected to your heat humidifier, please keep one of these attached to your tracheostomy tubes. This will prevent your airways from drying out. Also, when you are back in your cabin and you are connected back to your heated humidifier, please run your nebulizer. I cannot tell you what a valuable piece of equipment this is. People don't use it. Please bring saline with you and then run saline through your nebulizer. I recommend people doing this at least twice a day. Please do it in the morning before you're going out for all your activities and in the evening when you come back. You might even want to run it a third time, possibly right before bed, to make sure your airways are nice and hydrated because they will get very, very dry on the cruise and just going out and about and not be connected to your heated humidifier. Talking about connections to your heated humidifier, this requires electricity. When you are on a cruise ship, there are very few outlets on board. You're going to have outlets in your stateroom. This varies. Some staterooms only have one U.S. outlet and one European outlet. Our stateroom, thankfully with Celebrity, we found that they always have two U.S. outlets and one European outlet. So we're very blessed for this. However, having two outlets is not enough. When you have a ventilator and a heated humidifier, those each require an outlet. So those are two outlets gone. If you want to run your nebulizer, you cannot do that. If you have a scooter or a wheelchair that you need to plug in and charge, or if you have a cell phone or an iPad or a computer 
or an electric toothbrush, you will not have any outlets. For this reason, you're gonna to wanna to bring along this outlet splitter. This outlet splitter has three individual plugs, plus it has three plugins for USBs and one plugin for C ports. So this provides many, many additional areas to get more electricity to your room. Also remember, once you leave your room, you are not gonna have access to electricity. So if you think you're gonna take your heated humidifier down with you to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or wherever you're going on the ship, you most likely will not be able to find a US outlet uh, available to plug in. You may be able to find a European outlet. So if you're watching this from Europe where you use the European plugs, you might find one of those on board the ship, but they are very far and few between. Next up, you're going to want a lot of supplies. Whatever you think you might need, please bring along because especially if you are on a cruise ship, you are not going to have access to medical supplies. So bring everything along that you could possibly need. For me, I pack everything into a carry-on suitcase. I know it is a lot, but it guarantees I have everything I need. Before I started traveling, I changed out all my tubing. So all this tubing, all this circuit is brand new. Also, I put a brand new water chamber on my heated humidifier. And then I also packed brand new circuits and brand new water chambers and everything in this suitcase. This way, I, in essence, basically have two of everything. I have one that I just changed out that's brand new and one in my suitcase that is completely brand, brand new. You're also going to want to bring along things to do a tracheostomy tube exchange. I put everything into this bag and inside I have a trach tube tie. I have my brand new tracheostomy tube and then inside I actually put lubricant jelly. I did this because it is really easy to lose these little packets. So I actually stick these inside here, close the box and it will not fall out. I put these together into a plastic bag, zip up the bag, and now if I need these in an emergency, I can easily find all this together. This is everything I need for a tracheostomy tube exchange. I brought along two extra tracheostomy tubes simply because you never know when one, one might fail. Heaven forbid it falls out for whatever reason or for whatever need you may have. I have two of those for emergencies. I also brought along antibiotics. Now, if you can bring along antibiotics with you, that is wonderful because this is my third cruise ship I have been on and the previous two cruise ships with the tracheostomy tube, I have gotten very, very sick. <laughs> so I bring along with me antibiotics to cover in case I get an infection. I also bring along herbs with me and vitamin C and this ensures that my body is getting the proper nutrition it needs to fight off any possible infections. Other supplies and equipment I bring along, of course, I bring along my ventilator in the back, my heated humidifier, I bring along my portable ventilator and then other needed supplies. For example, I bring along this tubing that's right there, an extra one of those. I bring along masks just because you never know when you might need that for some reason. Extra uh, air filters. I have gloves just in case. I don't usually use them, but you never know. Here are some extra HMEs. This is an extra Omniflex that's right here. This is an extra exhalation valve. So right here, I brought that extra in case I need it. Ah, oops. This is very important. It is dish soap. I use dish soap because I reuse my heat and moisture exchangers. I do not change them out every day. And especially with having a lot of mucus, they get very, very dirty. So I take this dish soap and I put it into a coffee cup and then I get boiling hot water, put that in, put my heated humidifier in and let it soak overnight to get all the phlegm and nastiness out. And so I have a fresh, clean HME. And I do that almost every night because I have so much mucus whenever I'm on the cruise line. Also, I bring along drainage sponge. I don't usually use a drainage sponge, 
but I can never plan if this possibly gets infected that I might need one or for whatever reason you might need a drainage sponge. I also bring along miscellaneous things. Here's an extra ace bandage and there's some gauze in here and um, tape and all sorts of things. Alcohol swabs just in case you never know because the moment you don't bring it you think mm, I should have brought that. Another thing I bring along are these vials of saline. I use these vials in my nebulizer and these are very convenient. This is one serving for the, the nebulizer so I just empty one of these and toss it out when I'm done with that. So I bring enough of these to run at least two saline treatments every day. One thing I asked my DME company before leaving on my trip is to get extra batteries and they were so kind. They actually provided me with two extra batteries. So these both last, these each last about four hours. So together I have about eight hours of additional battery and that is fabulous because let me tell you, whenever you take your ventilator out, it cannot be charged and you have limited outlets and limited time in the stateroom. So what I do is whenever I go out, I keep one of my ventilators here. I have two ventilators and I charge batteries. So that is lovely. You can also get a battery charger. I don't have one of those because my DME company does not provide those. They just simply say, charge it in your ventilator. So I keep one ventilator here at all times plugged in charging my batteries because it is very easy to run out of batteries here on the cruise ship because like I said, there are limited outlets and you don't have time to plug in your ventilator except when you're in your stateroom. One funny story about me not bringing something along that I thought I might need was bringing along albuterol, which I can run in my nebulizer. I did not think to bring that along. And then I got on the cruise ship and I thought, ooh, you know, having albuterol, which I can run in my nebulizer, might be really helpful because the albuterol in the nebulizer really gets down into your airways, can help open them up. And if I get sick, it is a lifesaver. It really helps open up the airways, helps me get rid of the mucus, and it is such a blessing. But I forgot to bring those. I didn't even think to bring those. And then the other night, I had an allergic reaction to food while I was eating. And I had to come back here to the room, take some Benadryl, and then I thought, wow having albuterol, which I could run through the nebulizer, would be very, very helpful. Instead, I do have an inhaler with albuterol in. It does work some, but it's hard because I have a tracheostomy tube. I have to take off my ventilator, suck in the albuterol, block off my tracheostomy tube, try to hold it into my lungs, and then connect my ventilator. It works, but not as efficiently as the albuterol in the nebulizer. So that is one thing that I thought I should have brought with me, and I didn't. And I needed it. <laughs> so those are some lessons learned about bringing things along that you thought maybe I might not use that, maybe I will always bring it along because you never know when you might need it. Next up, we have eating on the cruise ship. One thing to be mindful of is your ventilator. You are going to want to make sure your ventilator is out of the way. When you are up in the dining room, people are constantly moving all around and you are going to be in the way almost wherever you are. So you're want to, going to want to get a seat either near a window, near a wall, or someplace where you can keep your ventilator away from people and away from people tripping on it. The other hazard is when you're up at the buffet, people are constantly cutting in and out of line. I cannot tell you how many times people have knocked my ventilator and have knocked my tubing off and it's very frustrating. Depending on your cruise line, for example, Celebrity does have the service that if you cannot go to the buffet and you want food, they will have servers come ask you what you want and you can tell them what you want. You can remain at your table and you do not have to get up. They will completely service you and get you drinks and get everything you want. Please check with your cruise line. I'm not sure how all cruise lines operate. Also, if you're going to be eating, I really highly recommend you go down to the dining room. The dining room, you are seated, they, they serve you, they have a wide selection of variety on their menu, and you can get almost anything usually that you want on the menu. You just have to ask and request for it ahead of time, and they can usually provide that for you. Also, when you are going down to the dining room, the very first day, whenever you get on board the ship, you're going to want to check with the restaurant or the dining room, wherever you're going to be eating, please check with them to find out 
where they have you plan to be seated. If you have open seating, you're going to request a place that's going to be out of the way. We have not done this in the past and they have seated us right in the middle of the dining room. My ventilator is in the way. People are tripping and falling over it. It's getting knocked off. It's a big fiasco and a mess. So please, on the very first day, find out where they have you seated. If you have open seating, please request something near a window, near a wall, someplace where your ventilator is out of the way. If you have assigned seating, again, explain this to them and say you need to be someplace where your ventilator is not going to be disturbed. Most of the time they can accommodate that. Sometimes they can't always do it on the very first night simply because they have so much going on that they need time to figure out a different plan for you. But please contact them the very first day that you're there so they can set everything in motion. Also, if you have a special diet, please let them know ahead of time. Like I said, a celebrity has a special needs form and you let them know if you have a special diet. Again, once you're on board the ship, they can usually make some sort of accommodations for you, but don't expect this to happen on the very first day. The very first day, it is mass chaos on a ship. So you are going to want to hang tight and try to figure out something else for the very first day if you have food allergies or a special diet. And usually day two, they're able to accommodate you. And lastly, if you have any questions or concerns when traveling, please feel free to ask your cabin steward or ask the maitre d' at supper or ask us relations. Please find somebody, ask questions, get things resolved because there is nothing that's more frustrating when you have an issue or a concern and you never ask for it to be resolved. It will not magically um, disappear. It will not, not magically resolve itself. You need to ask and get a uh, resolution for yourself. And usually the cruise lines are very happy to try to make as many accommodations as possible for you. But again, please be patient. Things do not happen immediately. They may need time if you need a special diet or they may need time if you need a special table. They will uh, need time and please be patient with them. So those are some tips and tricks for traveling with a ventilator. I hope you found them very helpful. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to contact me. During this cruise, we visited Bermuda, the Azores, Ireland, Amsterdam, and Norway. If you would like to see more fun and adventures from my cruise, please see the playlist Cruise Adventures 2024. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bon voyage! Bye-bye! I also bring along another heat... Uh, you're looking at me. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was just curious what, what you were all bringing. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to shoot my YouTube video, and my mom keeps going. Oh, oh, oh! I, I want to know what she brought with her. <laughs> I gotta go find. <laughs> I can't, I can't film my videos, people. This is really hard. Okay, bye. I'm gonna do another take. See you later.